everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're seeing this. Welcome to this once in a lifetime opportunity for myself. You know me, I'm Melanie Hines, uh, to sit down and interview John Dowling, who's uh, given us his time. We're on both coasts. I'm in Maine, he's in California. So it's it's cra it was crazy to get our time together, but God, it's always perfect timing. So mm -hmm. thank you, John. Um, thank you for being on here today, and thank you for sharing your time with us. And and John, I'd just like to start off with people because a lot of my community are investors in a lot of different things. Um, I this is just our opinions, guys. Uh, we are not financial advisors. Uh, this is for entertainment purposes only, but we do like to share what we've been led to do. And so, John, tell us uh, for our audience what your background is, how you came to be in the Iraqi dinar. Well, first of all, thanks, Melanie, for having me on your program. I really appreciate the opportunity and to talk to you and your audience collectively. Um, I've been in the wealth trance for about 11 years, same as you, as we talked offline. Uh, I'm a professional musician, singer, songwriter. My background is um, at a performance degree uh, from Berkeley College of Music in Boston. So I grew up in New England, so I'm not far from you. And then uh, my master's was in music business management. So the idea was to make a, a good living at my passion so I could understand how the industry worked and leverage better opportunities for myself and future artists, which is now um, paid very good dividends as far as that. Um, <clears throat> I got in the well transfer about, like I said, 11 years ago, because I was dealing with a lot of angel investors and uh, venture capitalists trying to find uh, a good, robust funds to finance my own career away from the major labels I've been dealing with for a long, long time. I recognized in 2001 that there was sort of a, a gap in the industry and that maybe going the investor route was better because they're a bank just like the labels. The difference is typically if you find the right investor, like any relationship, you can typically get more autonomy, a little bit more um, creativity in terms of the percentages you give up and the terms that you get versus a label, which you just pretty much take whatever they give you and you're relegated right. to slave. <clears throat> and I was, um, I had a business meeting with a, a liaison, kind of a go between between me and the investor. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. And he um, he said, uh, you know, he was talking to me about the terms of the investors and what they're looking for and all the particulars. And he said, you know, you should pick up some dinar. And I'm like, some what? And he starts telling me, extolling the virtues of how great this country is and all the wealth that they have. And uh, you know, it's Mesopotamia. It's God's original Middle East land. And you know, it all made sense. It was just a timing thing. When the investors went away, I then met a subsequent investor a year later that I worked with a little bit longer, who was from Vietnam. So God was putting these puzzle pieces together, and he made it clear to me over a period of time that he wanted me to finance my career and help other people with his money and not with Satan's money through man. So in a very short uh, explanation, that's how I got started. Wow, that's an amazing story, John. That Thanks. is pretty cool, and I love the way you share it. Because, yeah. because I too, it was God led. I'm literally a friend called me up that I met. She was the first person with a prophetic gift that walked up to me in an airport and said, you know, I don't, I usually prophesy during trips and I haven't done anything this trip until now. She walks over to me and tells me I'm a frog in the body of Christ <laughs> because he's put all these obstacles in front of me, but yet I leapt over them by faith. You know, and it was just an interesting, so we became fast friends. I wanted to understand her gift. I didn't understand the prophetic gift. I've always had a prophetic gift, but I didn't ever think I had one. But anyway, she's the one who told me about the Iraqi dinar. And then I just mm -hmm. dismissed it. I went into the yard and laid in the sun and the Holy Spirit, still small voice said <laughs> dinar. And, and the, the rest is history. As I started investigating, I saw lots of countries were putting a lot of money into Iraq, like they mm -hmm. are now, like a lot has happened in the last year. So what is your perspective about everything that's been happening lately with Iraq? Well, I mean, as you and your viewers know, this has been, um, to use visual, visual analogies, it's like a, a boiling pot. It's been building to a boil over a, a prolonged period of time. Um, as I'm sure you've told your viewers, <clears throat> God's timing is perfect, and it doesn't work on operate on our timing and our emotional feelings because we don't see the bigger landscape of what God is doing. But uh, to your question, I'd say that we're at a tipping point now. We're in a situation where Saudi Arabia has now uh, given Iraq the green light to get into the WTO, World Trade Organization. But to do that, they have to come off a program, suppress controlled rate, 
And to do that, they have to get all their bills and reforms and taxes into parliament. And to do that, you have to remove the corruption. What I've been telling my viewers to watch out for, and I thought I was hoping might be of use to your viewers, since I'm sure they're, uh, like you said, they're investors and deep dive puzzle piece people that are trying to find the, the, the niche in this, if you will. I think what we're watching is Iran <clears throat> interfere with their little brother, Iraq. The more and more they do that, you just had, I think, yesterday, uh, the Jordan military and the Pakistani military are now starting to fire uh, munitions and missiles at Iran, which is going to inflame the situation, which on the surface sounds bad, but for what we're looking for is a really good thing, because it's what Kim Clement said, as things seem at their worst, I will free my people. So that's one component. Then we watch Israel get involved, and more people take their eyes off of Iraq and on the, whole, the totality of the Middle East. We're going to see Iran make a grave mistake by bombing the secret nuclear um, power plants that Iran has. That will create the ultimate tumult and panic, and that's going to panic Iraq enough, the government, the proxy government, to, uh, to reinstate the currency and give us what we've been anticipating. So I, I think it'll be a suddenly moment, but we're, we're, we're building to that crescendo point right now as I see it. Oh, that's I love that perspective, John. Thank you for sharing that. I have not heard it said that way. So I'm so glad my viewers are going to love this. Please, everybody, comment down below um, what you feel about the conversation so far. It's only been a few minutes, but guys, uh, we are just here. I love how we when we when we combine our gifts and talents, how mm -hmm. we get more out of it. And that's what I love about this community. I wish they would stop, you know, trying to beat each other and compete. Yeah. And just, it just it just stop criticizing each other. I hate criticism. I really don't like criticism. So I really appreciate your perspective. Well, I'm honored talking with you today. And and so what do you think about some of the other currencies too, like Vietnamese dong or, or Bolivar? Are you are you in are you in a casual investor in those as well, like some of us, or are you only in the Iraqi dinar? Oh no, I'm in a lot of different components of the wealth transfer. Thank you for asking that question because it's actually more intricate than people I think might realize it first. And and yes, if you comment, please, no tomatoes. <laughs> no Ron tomatoes. We're, we're just trying to, to help. So yeah, I, I we get into the investment part, Melanie. I think you, you touched on a really important point about um, mindset and, and energy level of where you put your, your thinking. Are you, know, you being positive? Or are you being negative? Is it constructive? Is it not constructive? We have too many people in the wealth transfer community, as I see it, and in the whole of the truth of community that want to be right who want to be first. And that to me signals pride and ego. What we need to do, in my humble opinion, is we need God's giving people to interlock and help each other cross the finish line. I, I don't really care if it's if it's you that's right. I mean, because nobody has all the answers, right? If you have a puzzle piece, you know, Nick Vanny Amon has one, somebody else has one, that's fine. The point of this is to cross the finish line. It, when other than like in a marathon, yes, people count, you know, who got first and second. But it ultimately, at the end of the day, if you cross the finish line, an investor told me once, he said, it doesn't matter how long it takes to get there as long as you get there. It's it's the bigger picture in mind. So I would encourage this in all communities to just focus on helping each other get to the finish line and not be concerned with ego and who's right and who's not, because we we don't have all the answers and nobody's right 100 percent of the time. So. To that point, as far as the investment, yeah, no, I'm in the Dong, I'm in the Dinar, I'm in the Boulevard, I'm in the Zim, I'm in the Thai Bot, I'm in a lot of different currencies. Uh, some I'm more heavily invested in than others. Um, I think what's going to be interesting on the backs of what we just talked about with Iraq is, is quietly Vietnam is getting ready to reinstate as well. And the reason you can see that is because China-Taiwan, that conflict is ginning up. They just had their elections in Taiwan on the 13th, if you didn't already know. And unfortunately, we didn't get the leader we wanted, but that's to, to signal to the world the corruption that's rampant in almost every respective country. It's to put a spotlight on that. Say. Yeah, that's what Trump is doing. And all the BRICS community is doing the same thing. It's, it's purposeful. They draw the enemy out into the light. So with that in mind, uh, China-Taiwan, to me, wholly focuses on Vietnam. Why, you might ask? Because what did Kim Clement say? That there would be a break in the Middle East in Southeast Asia. People don't always talk about that. You got to remember the whole thing. So when China-Taiwan happens, it's a staged event like everything else. And when that occurs, you're going to see there's two sides of China, right? There's the CCP, 
And then there's Xi, who's on the Republic side, right? So you, there's parallel presidencies, parallel economies, there's parallel sides, there's good and evil. There's always a, 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 a you know, left and right side to the component. What I'm saying is that when China-Taiwan happens, we need to be watching Vietnam, because I believe that event is going to free uh, Vietnam enough out of communism to break their dong free. Uh, the dong is heavily backed um, in silver and in Litecoin. So they, they have a lot of assets that people don't know about. They have a lot of rich Brent crude in their oceans. They have a great manpower. They have a 34% GDP year over year for the last 14 years. It's one of the highest in the world. They don't have a financial issue. They have a communism corruption issue, not unlike the rest of the world. But I, what I'm saying is I think it'll be sort of a domino effect as Iraq goes. I think Vietnam will be shortly thereafter. And then we're going to start to see the other currencies start to you know, make their moves summarily. Oh, awesome. Now, listen, you brought you brought up Litecoin. <clears throat> Are sure. you invested in cryptocurrencies as well? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, OK. Would you like to share some of your favorites or? Sure. I mean, I'm in, you know, I'm in the majors. Um, as most people know, there's thousands of coins. And I always use a sports analogy because people can relate, you know, like in the NFL, as an example, pick any sport, but just the NFL. Uh, there's, you know, tens of thousands of athletes vying to, to make the pros, but there's only, what, 180 to 200 spots roughly that make the cut when it's all said and done. Similarly, with the cryptos, there's thousands of mean coins, but I think there's only about seven or 10 that are going to make it through the process in ISO 20022 for the new blockchain. I'm wow. invested in what most people I think are XRP, which is going to be gold-backed, XLM, which is going to be silver, XTC, which is copper, IOTA and Algorand, which are platinum palladium. One of the mean tokens I'm in that I'm watching closely is Shiba Inu, because for two reasons, they're going to have a platform that divorces away from Ethereum. You see, the SEC as most people know, have been in bed with Ethereum as the monopoly, because if you have to buy coins, you typically have to have Ethereum to do it. That's the, the middleman. Shibarium is going to be, along with XRP, one of the separate platforms that will decentralize and break away from the SEC's debt grip. And uh, so Satoshi Kazama has been uh, uh, unfairly suppressing that coin on purpose. Uh, I think God is going to put an attack of conscience on him at some point here, and he's going to be forced to kind of go, OK, and I need to you know, do something of honor here of, of, beyond you know, what I've not been doing and release that coin at least into a penny. And then we'll see how how far it goes for whatever period of time. So we're not on my channel. We're not just me personally. We're not big on dates and rates. We're more about puzzle pieces and time uh, events and sequences, you know, how those things interlock. But uh, uh, Shiba at some point is going to break free, I believe, this year. And that's going to be one that I'm invested in. And I, I, I personally think is not a bad idea for people to get into. Because, again, they're going to have their own platform like XRP. And they'll, they'll be Sheila and Sheena. And there'll be other things. And you can, you can do transfer. Well, they have a whole lot of. Yeah, it's its own universe. So um, those are some examples, prime examples of what I'm invested in with, in terms of the crypto market. Pardon me, I'm sorry. I said those are some prime examples of things I'm invested in the crypto yes. market. Yeah, well, I think that was great what you shared. You shared some stuff I did not know about the separating from the SEC is in bed with Ethereum. I didn't know that. Yeah. Why? Because the good Lord woke me up five years ago and said, blockchain, blockchain, blockchain. Mm -hmm. And literally brought me people, not from YouTube, people that I know. One I knew 20 years who was an investor. <laughs> Um, and he was, he loved the crypto space. He taught me what I knew. He helped me get me started just because he introduced me to, uh, a, like a business model that was based in CBDCs. That's how I got my first wallet. Um, and so that's how I got in, but, but I'm like you, I, I want to stay diversified in everything. I'm in everything. Like I tell people be diversified. Don't, don't get in. I'm not in 2000. Obviously I picked seven on the, sure. what consider to be Shiba News, one of them, the Lord led me into. I also have Litecoin, which is hilarious. You talked about Litecoin. I've yeah. been, I had no idea that that the the Vietnamese dong was backed by, I was like shocked about the Litecoin. Yeah. See, I don't know that much about them. I just follow the leadership. It's just, I just make good picks, I think, because I've got God telling me what yeah. to do. Yeah, that's all you need. Because, yeah, he led me into it. I mean, as long as you're hearing from God, you're good. Like, right. and that's, that's how I got my strategies, my three-step freedom strategies. 
but I'm so glad to meet you. I'm so no, glad to talk about this. And it's nice to hear a different perspective on the dinar, the Vietnamese dong, the boulevard, and how this is all going to happen with bricks. And I mean, mm -hmm. what do you think the future holds for the U.S. dollar, given everybody de-dollarizing? What's your perspective on that? Well, good question. There's there's two schools of thought as I've seen as observing it. There's the school of thought that well, first first we need to establish what the facts are, right? So we're going to an east-west reset. And you can see that because the entirety of the world is tired of being subjugated by the deep state dollar, which has nothing to do with the Constitution. It's all about the corporation. <clears throat> so that's important to denote. Um, so short term, it's not good. Um, we're going to see, I think, a 50 percent correction in the dollar in the market this year here in California, as I've been telling people on other shows, because you know I'm not from California, like I said, I'm from the East Coast, but I've lived here enough to, to you know see the you know, things come full circle from when I got here. And here the, you know, a lot of the trends start in California, good or bad. And so the real estate, uh, commercial real estate market, even the, the home real estate market for that matter, residential is so prevalent here. Um, I'm seeing about a 40% pullback on the commercial real estate market here in California. People are leaving in droves and it's not hard to see why. You can add me to the mix as well for a variety of reasons. Uh, but um you start to see that and you look at those demarcations, <clears throat> commercial real estate and, and residential, how that equates to the dollar, the de-dollarization, as you rightly said, with the BRICS nations, uh, you, you know, countries are pulling away. Once you have Saudi Arabia and you have, you know, Russia and India and China, you have those major players. It's just a matter of time before everybody wants to go in. You got to look at Iran, for that matter, has joined the BRICS. But that might not be to their advantage because they're still going to try to seek the U.S. military as a refuge when they get attacked. So they're kind of because their their currency is currently sanctioned. They call it the uh, I think it's the real out of country and Toman in country. So they're they're one to watch as well as we discussed for a whole other reason. But, but back to your point or your question, um, I think short term, it's going to be real bad for the dollar over the next 12 to 18 months. I think once. Trump is optically back in because we are, you know, I can tell you that he is the commander in chief because he runs the military. Whoever runs the military runs the country. That's constitutional. I have a friend who graduated from the Naval Academy about a year and a half ago, and he sent me his, his diploma and he said, you can keep this, but you can't share it viral. And I kept my I kept this confidence. And in it, it had his credentials on the diploma underneath was signed Donald J. Trump, commander in chief. Wow. So. So he is running the show, but we're, as, as cliche as this is, I know people don't like the term, but we have to be honest, we're, it's a script. We're, we're in a matrix script, we're coming out of it. All of us woke up that are here and are, are you know, alert to the fact God, God uses certain people like you to uh, take the scales off people's eyes and ears. And so if we are tasked with leadership, then we also task with the responsibility to, you know, tell that truth as as candidly and as as transparently as possible. So, you know, with all that being said, I think, you know, once Trump is optically back in, he's already got solutions in place. You heard him the other day. I'm sure you've told your viewers he's not going to go with the central bank digital currency, which means Fed now to, uh, on the. What's encouraging about that, even if he's politically pandering, it's still true. Because what that does is that helps those who are in community banks and, uh, you know, you know, uh, credit unions, I was going to say, that helps them because um, I'm looking at a, um, a pretty well-sized uh, credit union in Tennessee, and my realtor friend Nancy is helping vet uh, the bank. And she said, you know, are you, gonna, are you doing CBDCs now? They said, no. So do you have Fed now? They said, no, we're not planning it. She, he's, she's like, you do carry a lot of debt. She, there's like, we're carrying next to uh, next to nothing right now. And if, if you have a bank like that, that's in a good position now, they're going to be even better on the other side of this. So right. I would say, I would say over the next 12 to 18 months, it's not good news for the dollar at all. However, when we, when we pull out of this and Trump again is optically back in, he's already had these things in place. He's been doing it since he started in 2016 and the lion's share was 2020. I don't know if you saw this, but Texas has it on their legislation in March to release the country's first gold-backed digital asset um, coin. So right. there's, 
there's going to be several other states that follow suit. Yeah. And so it'll be interesting because I know Texas has that unique status when they join the U.S. Mm -hmm. that they can do that. It'll yeah. be interesting to see what happens because it'll just be interesting. But I will tell you that that um, did you hear about what the Supreme Court did on June 14th? Of last year, you mean? No, this year. Yes, uh, 23. Yes. 23. Uh, you have to refresh my memory. Sorry. They voted nine to zero that if anybody's being audited oh. by the IRS, yes, that uh, anybody connected to those people, the IRS doesn't need a warrant. They gave them full carte blanche to look okay. at anybody and pour without a warrant and without letting you know. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, I do remember that now that you said that. But I, I wouldn't be too concerned about that, Melanie. I'll tell you why because Trump baked the IRS into the Treasury back in 2020, so they've already been dealt with. I mean, there was all that brouhaha about what 87,000 agents and that's kind of gone away. Um, I've had friends that live in DC that have taken pictures and shown me the treasury building has been tented up and is being taken down, deconstructed. So, right. um, so they're already been dealt with, but again, the majority of people in the world don't know what we know aren't, aren't on the inside track. Oh, so yeah. I, I think by next year, as Trump is optically back already, uh, that will be all dealt with and that'll just, it'll blow away. Right. Well, that's I, I'd love to hear your perspective. Thank you for sharing that. Sure. Um, how are we on time? I wanted to make uh, yeah, I got another 20 minutes or so. OK, good. Yeah, that might work with me because I know I've got a five o'clock. Sure. But, um, let me ask you. So, OK, we talked about what the the. Uh, what the Supreme Court did in June, um, I have a little bit different perspective and. I don't know if I should share it here or not. Maybe we could talk offline about it. It's just what I've been seeing for clients that give me checks. Mm -hmm. As soon as they announced the Fed now, with from July, they announced the Supreme Court did the thing in June 14th. They announced the Fed now by October. I, do you ever do any mobile deposits? Oh, sure. Okay. I get checks from various people around the country and they... All of a sudden, in the bigger banks, it started with the bigger banks. It would show I'm an auditor, right? The auditor in me doesn't go away. Right. So I noticed that, like, you would notice the details of music, right? I sure. noticed the details of banking. Like, <clears throat> I watch transactions. People, you know, I see the the problems with TurboTax when the checks law changes and they don't change the thing. That's the kind of thing I see. I'm mobiling deposit people's checks. And all of a sudden, I get this notice. Oh, this check qualifies for automatic deposit if you pay a fee of two dollars. Hmm. And that to me said that's the beauty of blockchain is that immediate transactions, but the banks are charging a fee. And I'm like, I'm not gonna pay their fees. I hate their fees. So yeah. I just say standard deposit. I don't need it that fast. I'll just do standard sure. deposit. But within a few months, Every single bank, the last one in October, I had a lady who was worked for a nonprofit. She was a middle middle America bank. It was a tiny bank like Farmers Trust something, mm -hmm. you know, a no name bank. And I said, look, you told me to hold your check. We're meeting now. I want to show you on the camera that I'm depositing your check. This is what it looks like. And I showed her the check and I said, I want you to tell me when it clears. I chose not to take the, I didn't want immediate deposit, right? I didn't want to pay the fee. The next morning, she sent me an emoji with two big eyes that said it cleared the same day. Mm. So it cleared the same day and they're charging fees and they already have the ability to get the money right away. Right. And that's in, that's in the little banks and the big banks. So this is my question. I don't care who says they're against CBDCs from a political perspective. If a bank is headquartered in New York state and it has branches all over the U S they can't, the, the, it's headquartered in the U S it doesn't matter what they do in the state because the bank has branches and they're, huh. if they're headquartered in New York and a lot of the bigger banks are headquartered in New York state. Oh, sure. New York state is the most liberal state in the nation. I live there. So I know. <laughs> they're doing do you know they're doing there are people they're paying people two thousand a month to do implants in their hand. Yeah. That's so, the right. So 
I'm just saying it, it literally is. We have to do our homework to to navigate and God led to navigate you through this process. But God gave me a few prophetic words with regard to the wealth transfer. And it was, you cannot worry about what the banks are doing because the banks are going to do what the banks are going to do. It's going to be messy. Take the money and run, meaning take it right now, because like you said, the dollar and get it into assets, yep. get it into things exactly. that will value no matter what happens. That part. And well diversified. And and I always tell people, get your crypto journey started early before they try to get rid of the exchanges. And mm -hmm. you know, the off ramps are already clunky because they don't want people being outside of their B system. Right. Exactly. So um a couple a uh, question, a comment for you. I'll start with a question for you since you have a banking background and spe specifically in auditing. Um when you're seeing all these banks, the majors specifically, start folding up, I, I put on my channel today that uh, Citibank's uh, C CEO is telling his managing directors that they're going to cut 20,000 jobs over the next two years, which results in a $1.8 billion loss, which is big on Main Street, but on Wall Street is nothing because they just print funny money all day long. Anyway, with that in mind, what does that sit? Because I get this question a lot, and I thought you being in the banking world would know. What does that signal to you, Melanie, in terms of um, all these banks going away? Obviously, we're going to a digital platform, but does that have any smacks in Nassara to you? Well, I was going to ask you what you thought about Nassara and Jassara, because there are pluses and minuses to it. Sure. Because you remember, I used to be a math major, computer science minor. So I think that way, then I became a business major and I did the auditing thing. So, and I audited a bank, I dated a branch manager. I know the branch manager aren't paid very well. And now they're millennials. So they're not asking any questions. They're the perfect people to be on the front lines telling everybody, oh, this is never going to happen because they're easy to keep. Yeah. Not control. They're easy to control. Exactly. So you don't really know, you know, no. that's why I say, don't listen to those, those staff at the lower levels because they don't know anything. They're, they're no. specifically kept that way. But right. my thought, my thought is, you know, I hope I can only pray that what you're saying about the military is true, because I mean, you know, because I'm just helping people navigate now so they can be safe while this that stuff is happening, because I think this dinar could happen soon. And I want people to be able to be safe. So that means, like you said, getting your money out of your assets. But with the banks, some of the banks collapsing is natural because why? Because the people that are controlling things are choosing which banks will survive, like JP Morgan. He was sitting at the World Economic Forum beside the prime minister of Iraq and the mm -hmm. central mm -hmm. bank of Iraq. So you know what I mean? He's yep. in there. Jamie Diamond, yep. he sold a bunch of his shares. So he's a chosen one. He was able to gobble up the two banks that, that collapsed in California. Another bank they took down was, was pro-crypto, very liquid, but they took them down anyway. So when you watch it, what they're doing, it, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's a war. I mean, it's a literally a war. Oh, yeah. so, so Citibank might not be in their good graces, but, but this is what I go back to, which I, I don't have an answer for. They're all, it's, we're all still publicly traded companies. They have boards, they have results that are on the NASDAQ, that are on the New York Stock Exchange. These companies are going to be fighting to survive. Mm -hmm. So some of them are going to have to lay off staff to survive because they're not in with the people that are going to be flush with cash because they own the redemption centers or they're going to run the redemption centers. Jamie Diamond, I think Chase is going to run most of those redemption centers. They're going to benefit from all the influx of cash they're, they will they will be huge. So some banks are chosen to get huge. Some banks will fall. We can't, we don't know which ones. It's like you have to wait and see. That's why my strategies are very general because it'll teach you with any bank. But but you can look at some banks and look at them failing, but that doesn't mean Bank of America, uh, Jim Willie had said Bank of America three years ago was rumored to be going through bankruptcy. Didn't mm -hmm. say what kind. I've been, I've seen companies go through bankruptcy. They don't tell their people they're going through right. bankruptcy if they're going through reorganization. Bank of America must have been reorganized because it's still here. It's still in name. You know, it might be, yeah, in name, but but if they're going to do Nasara Jasara, they have to change the paperwork over. Oh, yeah. They yeah. have to, you know, they have to tokenize people's assets, et cetera. 
But right. my question is, because I've always been against signing an NDA, a yes. non agreement, because that's a way the government can claw back your money. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Gov- you know, it goes back to what we talked about offline. Sure. Uh, and, and so I, I'm my, my biggest concern is that with Nasara Jasara, they fib and say, you know, because everybody needs a way out of debt, 37 mm-hmm. trillion. Mm-hmm. They're going to use it to swipe the debt of the governments, swipe the debt of the people, but they'll 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 make the people sign paperwork. And if they sign the paperwork, you got to be careful what you sign. And most people do not look at what they sign. Yeah. yeah. So that's my concern. That's why I have a channel. That's why I'm warning people. I warn them offline more than I do online. I try to keep it light. I Somebody's going to edit this for you, right? Yeah, but we're not going to edit out the good parts or anything like that. Just dead good. Space. Well, just let me know because I, I didn't know because I stay away from I honestly on my channel because I'm I stick to faith and financial. Sure. Because I already have them looking at me enough. Yeah, because yeah. No, I understand. <laughs> well, let me let me address a couple of your points, if I may. So, as far as the military part, I I mean. Do am I, you know, am I sitting next to President Trump? No. And you know, I don't have General Flynn on speed dial or anything like that. But I I do have people who have people that are close to those camps that I, I have peace about the information that they're giving me. Good. You know, people I I mean I, I may not have like like I said, right at Trump, but I have I have people that are higher than average, whatever that is. Good. Um that that, you know, I have a friend who uh, is retired military. As, I'm just giving an example so people understand why I say this. So I, I have a friend who's uh, fought two tours of duty, one in Korea and one in Vietnam. He's in his late 70s. He was a very high up general in the Marines. Uh, he served at the Department of Defense for 26, 26 years, I want to say. And he served up and under every president prior to President Trump, which we know is all deep state. And so he was privy to a lot of meetings that most people aren't. And he told me that Josh Ernst, the press secretary under Barry Sortero, said denial will never happen under our watch. So it gives you an example of things like that, that the public would not be privy to, that right. I have been given access to for, for whatever reason, just to, to help God's people, much like yourself. So we're, we're simpatico in trying to help our respective audiences get peace and clarity, right? And yeah. so <clears throat> as far as that, yeah, I'm totally, I'm really glad you said that because I am in the camp that when you go to the bank, not the redemption center, sorry, folks, when you go to the redemption with the bank and do your simple exchange, you just want to start a relationship. You know how this goes. Go with one note, a low denomination. Let them ask questions. Don't give up too much information. You're holding the cards. Be nice. Be professional. Go in with somebody maybe to have your back, you know, because you don't know who's in the parking lot. Go to a bank where nobody knows you. Maybe go to another town or another state if you live in a small area that crosses state lines to give yourself anonymity. You know, common sense things. Ask to see the back screen rates. When you exchange that note, they're going to ask you if you have any more. You say, I might. Why don't you give me a call when it fully matures? You're not required to give up all your cards. And never sign an NDA because, like you said, it's a trap. For the simple fact that they could say, well, you sign this NDA, you can't talk about it on social media. You're like, well, I don't have any social media, or I got rid of it. And they're like, okay. But now they have a document. Now it's their word against yours. They could make up anything they want and say, well, you blabbed on social media. We got it. No, I didn't because I'm not on there. Well, they have a document, and that's all the corrupt judges care about is documents, not hearsay. I am so so glad we're on the same page with that. Yeah, I I agree because not everybody is. But the other thing I want to touch on, you didn't ask me, but I think it's important since we're getting into the weeds here. There's this um, there's this uh, overlying or overarching uh, notion in our community, right? I'm sure you've dealt with it. That uh, oh, if you have Zim, and I just want to talk about the Zim for a second because there's things you, that you I don't know. I don't I don't see all your shows, but I don't. When I say this stuff, most people are like oh, I never heard that before. So you'll tell me. But there's this notion that when you have the Zim and you do the exchange, that you have to give up 80 percent of of a humanitarian project. That is complete nonsense. When you bought the I, currency, they didn't say that to you. You know what I'm saying? Like it, there were no- I didn't know what you're saying. I look at it this way. I remember when Zim was floated, the idea of it. Uh-huh. The Zim funds came out in 2015. And so I'm like, 
It could be a loss leader. It could be a trap too. Mm -hmm. Just get people in there. Because there's some people that didn't hear about, honey, could you auto start my car since it's so cold? Because I know <laughs> I need to leave in five minutes. Oh, okay. So we'll have to wrap this up. John, this was sure. really good. Maybe we should do a part let's two. Let's do another one next month. That'd be great. Let's do it. Let's for sure do it. But this is what I'm saying. It could be floated as a loss leader, meaning people get bonds. They're not likely to think, oh, I can just go to bank and do currency. But if I can get a lot of money for these bonds, I'll bring all my currency into this one appointment. Mm -hmm. I think it. it's more of a trap. I'm not saying the bond. I have Zim bonds, yeah. but I'm not, I'm not saying they're not going to have any value. I'm just saying if you use that as an excuse, if they use that as an excuse to get you into the redemption, they're going to take everything from you and right. you're going to be left with your head spinning and you've signed away your rights. So I agree. You might <laughs> I agree. But let me just add to that. They're going to have tremendous value because they're a bond, not a currency. What does it say? Payable to the bearer of note on demand. Here's why they're going to have tremendous value. Two words, Nelson Chamisa. He is a Christian. He, he was asked by China's Republic, not the CCP, to run, right? Just like um, uh, Sudani was asked and some other people by similar, similar groups. And so anyway, he, uh, I did a show with uh, David Mahoney, you might want to check out at a later date, where we put up some articles where Chamisa said, we're going to be the breadbasket to the world when he returns. And Zimbabwe has the most amount of gold in the world, bar none. They have 132 million uh, tons below ground. They have untold trillions above, but they have the same thing that a lot of other people have is corruption. But as that gets removed and he gets rightly reappointed, the, the Zim is a gold mine. It, it, this is going to be able to allow people to do so much for the kingdom. It's ridiculous. And we don't need the ties of somebody saying, you have to do a project. You have to, you're going to get a, a 555 page document of what you can and cannot yeah. do. And I'm like, Nonsense. I'm like, but we're supposed to rule and reign until Jesus returns. And we need to put on our crowns, adjust our crowns, right. live a repentant and forgiven lifestyle and nothing can stop us because we're building <laughs> something incredible that nobody can destroy as we unite as Christians in a Christ consciousness fashion, where we know we should be ruling and reigning and creating miracles in our own lives. God told me I'm under an open heaven and I, I, I'm seeing miracles, health miracles. My sister recovered when the doctor said she was going to die. Mm. She recovered. I'm just, I'm just getting together praying with everybody. All their things. So it's an honor to meet you. I don't know how oh, to that's... land this plane, but I appreciate your time, John. Thank you for your time. Let's do another one next month. I would like to continue the conversation. I obviously want to watch this back. There were so many good nuggets you shared, John. You're Thank a wealth you. of information. I hope my, my um my uh, subscribers will definitely check you out. And likewise, I hope your people will check me out. Let's all grow together. Guys, we all have to support each other's channels that are truly here for the kingdom perspective because it only takes one candle in the darkness and whatever platforms we're on, we're supposed to shine bright during the darkest of times. It is a dark time. It's yeah. the best of times and the worst of times, as some yeah. people have said. But at least we're t connected now, John. It's so honored to meet you. It's it's just been a blessing. May God bless you, my my friend. Likewise. Thanks for your time, Melanie. Melanie, appreciate it a lot. Thank you. I appreciate you. We'll talk soon. Okay, bye. God bless.